All right, this is my second time to make this video. First one, I had some personal uh, information in the background that it's personal. Um, so I'm about to start redoing my first CD, which was Calibrate. And the problem with that was it was all recorded straight from my Roland XP60, which is right here. And I just ran two cables out of it, 16 track sequencer. So you got a left and right channel. It went straight into Cakewalk, whatever version I was using, 2000, 2001, on my very first computer, which had a gigabyte of space. And uh, so you had two tracks, everything's mixed, pre-mixed in my keyboard, and went straight into the computer. And then I laid down audio tracks with maybe some whatever outboard effects unit you know, I had at the time. And uh, I've never liked that album because the way it was recorded, I didn't know what I was doing. And it was very noisy and I was pitchy and the, I didn't have a pop stopper, not a very good microphone. Anyway, I've never been happy with it and never really let people hear it. So uh, I did want to, I spent a lot of time working on that way back then. So what a shame to not be able to share it with anybody. So I've decided to go back and redo it. So what I'm doing is because I have to be faithful to what it was then. I don't want to make it sound like what I sound like now or the way I would write now. It has to be just like it was back then. So the problem is I don't have any of those project files back then. And even if I did, I couldn't use them. You couldn't use them because it's just two tracks. So the only way to capture that is to go back to the source. So uh, everything that was recorded or programmed back then was saved on these floppy disks here. So uh, in these floppy disks here, um, you would save to uh, two different MIDI types. Uh, MIDI, I don't remember what they're called, MIDI 0 or MIDI 1, or .svq, which is a Roland... Um, it's a Roland source uh, file type exclusive to Roland. And it would save the MIDI data as well as the patch uh, patches that you used for those uh, 16 tracks. And so all of that is on these floppy drives, floppy disks, I mean, here. There's tons of them, and they're all labeled C. Uh, the edit floppy disks, the edit being my production name I use for all the projects I work on. So everything's in here. I've, I've counted 24 of these discs and two of them I can't even read anymore. Um, and then there's some compilations of everything. I end up with lots of duplicates uh, and there's stuff in here from when I was playing live or when I was playing with other bands. But I have all this stuff and it's of no use to me on the discs because my floppy drive and my keyboard died. I upgraded it to a USB floppy drive. So I can save a ton of stuff now. So I got me a flop, a USB um, floppy drive and imported all of these files. And I've got them sorted by disk or I've got them sorted by file type. These two things I found are problematic because the way I've named these songs, a lot of them didn't have song names. So you see this, I have no idea what this is and I can't even play it. I can open the MIDI file up and maybe figure out what that is, but I don't have many, most of them are uh, the Roland files, so they can't be played through here. So the only way to identify what these are is to put them back on a thumb drive, load them back into here, and play it, and then I can identify what it is. So what happened was I had this huge, huge list of things here, and I didn't even know where they went. And it was important that I kept the discs, because at least by disc, I could actually go back and look at the discs, the physical disc, where some of them, I'll look at one of these here, I've got an image. I ended up taking pictures of all of these, by the way. Yeah, I don't know what the picture is, but uh, I have, 
I've taken photos of all these discs. It was important because I would write the names of the songs on here. So I could go back and do them. You see, I did lots of covers and stuff too. But that helped me figure out what the names of some of these songs were with their, their weird naming. But what I had to do uh, last few days was I made this giant list of all of these songs and I put them in order and I've got them labeled by the disc that they're on. And I started coming through and said, okay, this 16 underscore bit is the album version of that song. And that's the MIDI file. I've also got the SVQ file of that. You would say, why do you have both? Because I had just the SVQ file, but I can't do anything with that on the computer. So I'd have to save it as a MIDI file too. I could open the MIDI file on my computer, load up the SVQ file on the keyboard to call up all the instrument patches. And I could edit the MIDI, you know, bad notes, stuff like that. Since I have this, I'm able to go back and recreate multiple tracks. The problem is I found going through these, there's a couple files I'm missing. Three songs in particular. One of them is Guilty. I only have a, what, four bars of that song? F, G, yeah, there's Guilty right there. I've got a MIDI file. It's only two bars. And same with the uh, SVQ file. There's another SVQ file of an alternate version with eight bars, but that's not the album version, and the album version is the one I need. So what I'm having to do is go over here, open up the song, and all I have are these four tracks. Because I had the SVQ file, I can go back and locate, all right, I have that type bass, I've got that organ, and I've got this uh, synth sweep sound here. But I have the original mix down of the song right here. So what I have to do is go back and listen to each part of this song, and I'm gonna have to reprogram all of these parts make them exactly like the original up here. And that's going to be meticulous. Now, I have a similar problem with uh, the song right here called No. But I have the MIDI file. Fortunately, let's find that one. No. I don't have the SVQ file. All I have is the MIDI file. That means I'm not going to be able to find the patches Easily, So I'm going to have to go back and actually figure out what those patch sounds are. But if I call up the MIDI track, it's right here. This is it. And I'll just have to go back. And I kind of wrote in what I think these sounds are similar to. Kind of a 303 bass or 101 bass. Uh, piano, some kind of crash synth effects. A square wave, some kind of sequence sound, some strings, and then the drums. I'll, I'll, the drums can be close. But again, I've got the reference track at the top here. I'll be able to go back and listen to that, and I'll be able to identify what patches those are. And this one, I've got all the data. So I'll be able to just go back, reprogram, or re, uh, get these sounds back in here. And what I'm going to be doing with all of these songs is re-recording each individual track with no effects, with the volumes set right in the middle. I mean, the volumes set well and um, the uh, panning set right in the middle because coming in out of the keyboard bridge, they're pan left and right, so they have all these effects going on. But I want to get everything as dry as I can. That way I can go back and do a proper production. Now, the vocals are going to have to be redone completely because, like I said, I was pitchy and... There were lots of noise and all kinds of things. So I'll have to re-sing the whole entire album. The biggest one that's going to be an issue for me, though, is going to be 
this last one right here. Escape part one. I don't have anything for this song. There's a part two version and there's another mix of it, but I don't have the original version. All I have, <laughs> all I have is an MP3 of the final version. So I'm going to have to load that one up, figure out the tempo and build the entire project based on this MP3 here. And it's going to be a lot of work. So that's going to be the one I'm going to say for very last. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the chaos I've gone through. Um, there's lots of duplicates in here. So what I'm done is cleaned up. So like for 16 bit, there's a whole ton of stuff in here, but now I've got things labeled. I've actually come back and relabeled these now. So this one's a stray mix. It just says 16 stray uh, dance mix, 16 dance. They can't be more than eight characters and you can't use any spaces. It has to be all caps for these files to be recognized in my keyboard. So uh, coming up with names for these is going to be kind of tricky on some of the longer names. But anyway, it's a lot of work, but when I get done, it should sound, well, it should sound a whole lot better. That's for sure. It's going to sound... Um, it's gonna sound good. It's gonna sound. <laughs> it's gonna sound dated. It's gonna sound as far as the the sounds I was using, the patches I was using. But that's what I sounded like at that time, and it was kind of a a sum up of all of those influences I had growing up. All that '80s music, um, tons of Information Society and Howard Jones and Genesis and Phil Collins and Duran Duran influences. Pet Shop Boys, all of that stuff was influencing me in the way I wrote my music and all that kind of stuff. And it, it's a little embarrassing to say, but it's just the way it is. I was learning how to write back then, and I really just used so many of those bands and so many of their songs as kind of templates on how to structure my songs. And even when I go back and listen to a lot of that stuff now, I'm like, man, that sounds exactly like Hide and Seek. That song, I mean, it's like all I did was change the chords and even the tempo is the same. But man, it's like when I hear it, I'm like, oh, what a rip off. That's what, you know, I had to chant, I had to grow. And uh, it was done, but it's, it's just the way it is. So when that album is finished, you listen to it, you're going to hear it and you're going to go, Oh, this this guy's copying. He's copying all these bands, and uh, I don't want to say I was copying them, but I kind of was. I was, like I said, I was using that as a template because I was learning how to do it. I was learning how to write and learning how to sing. My, I was trying to find my own sound. I think I developed my own sound, but it wasn't until after Calibrate where I really started coming into my own. So, but it's important to me though that. I keep this album sounding the way it was back then because it's the only way you can hear how I grew over time. So I uh, hope to have it finished and ready to go in the spring at some point. So watch for Calibrate or Recalibrated or whatever I choose to call it. It's going to be called Calibrate. But it was 2001, so that's a long time ago. Anyway, all the best. See you.